Hi everyone, this is part four of the Sensation and Perception Unit. This particular video will cover the parts of the ear, the functions of the parts of the ear, and hearing. So on this slide, you should be able to identify the different parts of the ear, and then you should be able to talk about their functions. So we will start with the outer ear. The outer ear has a funnel-like structure that it is extending off the head. It's made of cartilage. This is called the pinna or the outer ear. This is gonna funnel in the sound waves into the middle of the ear. The canal that runs through the middle of the ear is called the auditory canal and sound waves will then move in through the auditory canal and then hit this membrane that is closing off the auditory canal. The membrane you've probably heard of before is the eardrum. It's also called the tympanic membrane and it will take those sound waves like a drum and it will vibrate those sound waves into the inner portions of the ear. The Tympanic membrane is uh, has three little extensions that come off of it. There are three little bones called the ossicles. And those small little bones vibrate as the vibrations come in off of the tympanic membrane and they move these vibrations into the inner ear. The three bones are called the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. They're also called the malleus, incus, and stapes, but as long as you know them as the hammer, anvil, and stirrup, you should be fine. So those little bones take those vibrations into the inner ear. The, the stirrup here is attached to the inner ear by a membrane called the oval window. The oval window will allow those vibrations to move into the cochlea. The cochlea is a snail-like structure. It's really small, um, but it's this coiled tube. And this is where transduction occurs in the ear. Transduction is the changing of that stimulus energy into an action potential that can be passed through a nerve and be taken onto the brain to be processed. The way this is done is inside of the cochlea, there is fluid and there is a very thin membrane called the basilar membrane. The basilar membrane is, um, is, is all the way through this entire cochlea and the basilar membrane has these small nerves that look like hair-like structures. And I have a, an animation on a, a few slides um, for that you can see that occurring, but those hair-like nerve cells are called cilia and they are actually taking the vibrations in and they are transferring them into and creating an action potential that can be passed through. So it's occurring, transduction is occurring in the cochlea, but it's done through the cilia, these nerve cells that look a lot like hair structures that are taking in those vibrations and turning them into action potentials. So uh, I mentioned that the action potential is passed from the inner ear to the brain and it's taken through the auditory nerve which is right here it's the extension off the cochlea there are a few other structures of the ear that are part of the ear that do not have a hearing function one of those parts is the eustachian tube and that's this tube that extends here from the middle part of our ear around the inner ear and is is moving downward this part of the ear is not a function of hearing but it it does have this um this tube that um, opens up into like the nasal cavity cavity and this is where you are feeling pressure air pressure when air pressure changes if you've heard anyone talk about having their ears pop or if you've had your ears pop before this is the the part where you're feeling that there is another structure that's a part of the ear that doesn't have a hearing function and it's this looped structure at the top here of the inner ear these are called the semicircular canals or the vestibular system. This is for your function of balance and for, for your sense of balance of your vestibular sense. The vestibular system is really similar in my mind to the way a level works. A level that allows you to make sure a picture on the wall is um, straight and um, level is by using a tube that has fluid inside and you can watch that little bubble move to the left and right as you are adjusting and that I think of is a really similar um, a system to your vestibular system because this fluid filled tube has fluid moving as you're moving from upright to offset. And as that's moving, it's sending that information to the brain and your brain is interpreting whether you are upright or whether you are offset or whether you're spinning, that fluid is sending that message in your ear to your brain about 
your um, your uh, relationship to the world and whether you're upright or if you are offset. And so that is the vestibular system. Our next slide is a video. It helps you see the motion of the ossicles or those three little bones, the hammer, anvil, and stirrup. And I just like it because it helps you see how it can take vibrations from the eardrum into the inner ear. Now that we receive the sound, the middle ear transfers this energy. The smallest bones in your body, the malleus, incus, and stapes start in motion. The malleus is attached to the eardrum. And as the sound travels along, the force is amplified by leverage until it arrives at the stapes, which acts like a reverse piston, creating waves in the fluid of the inner ear. Okay, I actually have one more video. This video is really helpful for seeing how once we have the bones that are taking the vibrations into the inner ear of the cochlea, this video helps you to see what's happening in the cochlea. They will actually go over one theory of sound as well. They will talk a little bit about the place theory, and I will explain that a little bit more after the video, but go ahead and watch this and, and watch how they, they portray the vibrations moving into the cochlea. They will also show you the cilia, the nerve cells, and they'll show you those things in the cochlea. So I think that will really help you get kind of a grasp and a visual on some of that information. The cochlea is shaped like a snail and is the size of a garden pea. It is filled with fluid and the sound vibrations make this fluid ripple, which creates waves. Hair-like structures called stereocilia sit on top of hair cells and are grouped together as hair cell bundles inside the cochlea. The hair cells inside the cochlea ride these waves and the hair bundles are moved. The hair bundle on top of the hair cell turns these movements into electrical signals. As the hair bundles are moved, ions rush into the top of the hair cells, causing the release of chemicals at the bottom of the hair cells. The chemicals bind to the auditory nerve cells and create an electrical signal, which travels along the auditory nerve to the brain. Different hair cells respond to different frequencies of sound. The hair cells at the base of the cochlea detect higher pitched sounds, such as a piccolo or flute. The hair cells toward the top of the spiral detect progressively lower pitched sounds, such as a trumpet or trombone. At the very top or apex of the spiral, the hair cells detect the lowest pitched sounds, such as a tuba. The auditory nerve carries the electrical signal to the brain, which interprets the messages as sounds that we recognize. So I really like that video because I like how you can see all of the different parts, whether you are looking just at the cilia or you are looking at the cochlea as a whole. I think it allows you to see that that visual really well. So there, that particular video described one theory of how we interpret pitch and sound, and they talked about something called the place theory. So I did not include that on the concepts to know below, but I will talk about it on this slide. So let's just kind of break this down um, from the anatomy first. So you can see this is the cochlea, how it's a coiled tube. If we were to uncoil this tube, this is what the cochlea would look like. There is a membrane within the cochlea called the basilar membrane. This membrane is, um, is just a membrane that will like line all of the inside of the cochlea. And then we have the hair cells. You can see the different hair cells. And the, what they described in the video was called the place theory, that we understand the frequency and the highs and the lows of the sound because it, 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 it um, triggers or hits a different part of the cochlea. So you can see as this is stretched out, the high frequencies are hitting early on high up in this like first part of the cochlea where the low sounds are hitting um, farther in towards like the top part of the cochlea. So that's called the place theory. There is another theory of how we understand the frequency and the pitch of the sound and this is called the frequency theory. And the frequency theory is not that it hits a different place, 
it's that the frequencies like if as you can see like the wavelengths here how we have these like kind of short and more like um quickly moving frequencies and then we have these slow long moving frequencies that it it actually moves the basal or membrane at that same like uh, maybe you could call it like pace or frequency so if we are moving in a very like high rigid quick frequency it will move that basal or membrane in the same fashion or if it's a long low slower frequency it will move it at that same frequency and as as that frequency is moving in through the ear, it will send the impulses at that same like speed or like frequency. And so it will get, it will move through more quickly or more slowly. And so the frequency theory is not that it is hitting the cochlea in a different location of the ear, but that it's actually hitting that basilar membrane and causing that basilar membrane to move with that same frequency. And then it will travel uh, with that same frequency to the brain and the brain will interpret it um, with that low or high pitch. So moving forward, there is another piece of this and it's understanding where a sound is coming from or sound localization. So if you were to close your eyes, you could hear what's going on around you and you could also somewhat pinpoint where that sound is coming from and the reason you can do that is because of the path to the ear that the sound is coming from if the sound is coming from your left it will hit your left ear more quickly than it will hit your right ear and because of the lag to your right ear your brain will perceive it as coming from your left side because it came more quickly to your left ear and so it just has to do with the path and more which ear it hits more quickly the one thing that we do not have have the ability to do is we struggle with the ability to tell if a sound is like um, high or low because of the placement of our ears but if you are able to tilt your ear um, so one ear is lower and one ear is higher then you will be able to have that offset so you will be able to tell if something is higher above you because it will hit one ear quicker than the other um, there are some animals that have their ears offset so that they can um, better pinpoint sound if it's high or low. One of those animals is an owl, so they can better pinpoint where um, maybe a mouse is in a field because of their ears that are offset, um, higher and lower, then they can pick up better if that sound is where it's coming from below them. Where we only really have the, our best understanding of localization is on like a, a plane from like right to left beside us, unless we were to tilt our ear a little bit. Finally, we have hearing impairments. This particular part of hearing has to do with hearing loss or lack of hearing. So there are two types of hearing impairments. There's conductive hearing loss or conductive deafness and sensory neural hearing loss or sensory neural deafness. Conductive hearing loss has to do with anything that is occurring from the middle ear or outer ear. So there could be different things that are happening that's causing conductive hearing loss. It could be a ruptured eardrum. It could be uh, something lodged in the auditory canal, or it could be a buildup of wax and debris in the ear canal. It could be a hardening of the bones in the middle ear. Um, typically conductive hearing loss is something that uh, can be helped or could uh, could be alleviated whereas sensory neural hearing loss or sensory neural deafness is something that is not going to improve um, this is something that occurs in the inner ear so there are different things that can cause sensory neural hearing loss or sensory neural deafness uh, it could be something that is hereditary or it could be something that occurs with if there is damage um, to the inner ear or if there's been head trauma. Um, it could have just been something that someone was born with that just has um, the, the dysfunction of the cochlea. It can also happen over time by hearing loud noises. Loud noises can break off the cilia inside of the cochlea and cilia do not regrow. And so that type of hearing loss, the cilia breaking off inside the cochlea, it will not improve. So uh, those are things that happen over time as we hear really loud noises, that type of hearing loss will not improve. So this has been parts of the ear, functions of the parts of the ear, different things that relate to the ear and hearing, and I hope that this was helpful.